We have a lot to talk about today, guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. This is the Sunday show where I take you through nine of my very best sold sales items of the week. I've also got a really, a really good featured reseller. Hang around. If you do nothing more today than hang around for this featured reseller because he has got an absolute doozy of a sale. Um, plus, I'm also going to take you through my weekly sales numbers as well. So three new videos every single week talking all things online reselling. If you want to learn how to make some money on eBay and Facebook Marketplace, then subscribe to this channel right now because I'm going to put out three new videos every single week week for you. Um, also give the video a like. It's a great way to support the channel, helps with the algorithm, and I just can't thank you enough for doing so. Let's dive into it, guys. The first one that I've got for you is a rugby league jersey that I picked up in the thrift, and it went on to sell for some pretty good money. Let's do it. All right, guys, first item up was this Newcastle Knights rugby league jersey that I picked up in the thrift for just $5. Now, this one was a curious one for me because it was a 5XL. It was a slightly larger size compared to what I've ever bought in the past, but I figured I'd just give it a go. And because it was brand new with tags, I thought that I could get some good money for it. Now, I'll put this one up for $90, buy it now, free postage. And in the end, I've taken an offer on it. After 92 days, it was the first best offer I'd received on the item for $70. So I've been able to sell this 5XL rugby league jersey for 70 bucks, take out fees and postage, $48.34 profit. And probably the one that I've got for you on this is if you do find a really good item of clothing, but it is a slightly larger size, a 4XL, 5XL example here, I still think you should pick it up if it's in really good condition. And certainly if it's one brand new with tags, um, because this one's gone on to sell. Yes, it was a slightly larger sales cycle, but I'm still really happy to wait for the 48.34 worth of profit. Next item up, guys, is this TV show, Only Fools and Horses. It was a DVD series that I found in the thrift. It was seasons one to seven, so this one was complete, and I've paid just a dollar each for them. So $7 in, the comps on eBay were telling me that I could get around $60 for it, and that's sure enough exactly what I've been able to get for it. So we're talking only a 23-day sales cycle on this one. It's a really good TV show that I probably should have spent a bit of time watching before I went on to sell it, but when you take out the postage, which came to $10.13, and the fees of $7.8, of profited $35 on this TV series found in the thrift for just a dollar each. So look, I know that I am quite fortunate in the sense that I'm able to get DVDs for a dollar in one or two of my local op shops, but I'm gonna capitalize on that because if you can buy at a low price, like $7 for a complete series, you're always gonna make money. But look, regardless of that, these DVD series go on to sell for $60. Only Fools and Horses, look out for it. It's a good bolo DVD one. Next item up, guys, is this Ralph Lauren men's long sleeve button up shirt. Now I've picked this one up in the thrift for just $4 and it's gone on to sell on the same day for $38.95. It had the wording Yarmouth written in the tag. So I had a bit of a research into it on eBay and I realized that this was actually worth upwards of $40 on eBay. So it stopped me from going ahead with my normal $29.99 free postage scenario. And I'm glad that I did the research because I ended up getting an extra $10 for it. Take out fees and postage, I profited $22.34. I think it's a really good thing for you guys out there to kind of set your own expectations of profit. For me, when you're talking shorts, shirts, pants, anything sort of in menswear, if I can make $20 profit on a single item of clothing, I'm really happy with that. So to get that for this one, I'm going to keep looking out for it. The Yarmouth Ralph Lauren button up shirt was a great one to get. And I'm really happy, obviously, that it sold on the very same day. All right, guys, time for an update on that PS2 bundle that I picked up off Facebook Marketplace for $120. I won't go into the details around the pickup because I did put out a video on Tuesday that went right through the process of purchasing it and then breaking it up for its maximized profit. Now, in the end, there was 50 games in the bundle. I did pull out 13, and then I did two other console packs as well. In the end, so far, up until this point, after four days of listing everything, I've been able to sell $128.95 worth of five games only. So five games have sold for the full asking price. When you take out the postage of $22.50, you take out the fees of about $16. I've made $90 back of the $120 that I spent, and I've still got 45 games and two consoles to go on to sell. So, you know, only being $30 down now in the space of four days, this is gonna turn into a huge profit. Um, really happy to grab it. I think it's a great item or a great category to look at when you're sourcing for items on Facebook Marketplace. It's almost a bit of a lottery. It's almost like scratching a scratchy when you're doing the comps for all these games. I, I didn't know before I bought what exactly I was getting my hands on in a sense of the games that came along with it. And then sure enough, 13 games are worth over 20 bucks. So it's a bit of fun to do. I like doing the video game series and the console packs and I will keep looking for them on Facebook Marketplace because if you find the ones like this, you're gonna make a whole heap of money from it. 
Found a pair of Levi Strauss jeans as well in the thrift. Now these were brand new with tags for just $10. So who's not picking those up when they see that in the thrift? Uh, this one's gone on to sell for $59.99. So I did go top end to what I would normally do in the sense of selling jeans. Uh, I generally go around the $40 price point, uh, but these were obviously brand new with tags. So I went to $60 and I did get the sale in the space of just three weeks. So take out fees and postage, $34.63. I am selling a whole lot more denim now. I'm buying a whole lot more denim in the thrift and it is proving to go on to sell well. I think it's a really good category. I think it's quite a common category for resellers out there, but I'm just sort of dipping my toes into it a little bit more over the last few weeks. But I can see why you guys sell it a lot because it does go on to sell for some pretty decent money. 35 bucks for a single pair of jeans. Always look out for the Levi Strauss brand. You're gonna go on to make a few if you can find it at a decent price. So there was a period there over the last couple of months where I started to buy a lot of workwear, a lot of King G, a lot of Hard Yakka, just to see how that sort of thing would go. And look, to be honest, it hasn't done a whole heap for me. I've probably bought a lot of used clothing in the sense of workwear that probably doesn't go on to sell as well. These were an exception to that. These were a pair of King G size eight women's workwear pants. Now they were brand new with tags, which was I think the little difference in the sense of everything else that I'd bought. Um, these ones are picked up for just $8 and they have gone on to sell for $48 and 97 cents. So profit and, and um, sorry, postage and fees, we're, we're talking $27. And like I touched on before, anything from a single item of clothing perspective over $20, I'm generally pretty happy with. So to make 27 bucks profit, it did hang around for 99 days. I haven't been buying a lot of workwear as a result since, but I do think from now on, if I do find anything brand new with tags in the hard yakka, King G, any of that sort of clothing, I'll probably just pick up if it's at the right price because brand new with tags will always sell better on eBay. Now I'm still selling quite a number of shoes, guys, no doubt about it. I've been able to sell these Nike Zoom TR men's running shoes, US size nine, gray, very good condition, picked up for just $6 in the thrift. These have eventually gone on to sell for $50. There was a 115 day sales cycle, but that was only due to the fact that I had them listed up for $64.99. There were a lot of watches on these, but they were probably just slightly too high of a price for a pair of new shoes. Now, I've slowly dropped the price myself down to, I think it was $59.99, and then somebody's offered me $50. I think for myself being a full-time reseller, having quite a number of shoes to move, if I can get a price of around $50, I'm always probably going to accept it on a best offer. Um, take out fees and postage. I've profited exactly what I like to profit in the sense of selling shoes, and that is $30. So yes, I had to wait around of 115 days. It's probably made me look at the price points a little bit more in the sense that these did hold around, but um, still, to make my 30 bucks on a pair of shoes, I've done a number of them this week, and I'm going to continue to hold around the $30 profit price point. Now guys, I was at the uh, local flea market a good couple of weeks ago. To be honest, it was 132 days ago. It's been a long sales cycle on this one, but I probably need to get back in there because you can always find really cool items at a very cheap price. I've been able to pick up this Forex Gold belt buckle, just the belt buckle alone. Uh, it was just $2 and I thought I'd give it a go. The Forex brand is a good one to get your hands on. A lot of beer heads out there. Um, sold for $29.99. So you can take out postage, take out fees. Almost 20 bucks for a belt buckle. I thought that was pretty good and 132 day sales cycle. So it just goes to show there's a lot of different places that you can source. I've probably got to get myself back into the flea market because there are some really great grabs at a very low price, which is always a very low risk scenario when you're trying to make a few on eBay. Now it was just the one piece of furniture this week, guys, and it's one that you've probably seen before if you've been watching these episodes. It was the Medane Buffet table. I won't spend too much time on this one because you have seen it a number of times, but they do go on to sell and I am constantly keeping my eyes out for this make of furniture. This one's gone on to sell for $150, but I bought it in incredibly poor condition. A lot of work needed to be done to it, a lot of cleaning needed to be put into it. So there was a bit of time spent, but I bought it for just $20 because it was in pretty average condition. It scrubbed up completely fine. There's been nothing wrong with this one. It was almost sold back into like new condition. It was really that good of a cleanup. Um, it's gone on to sell for $130 worth of profit and it's sold within the space of pretty much a week eight days from when I picked it up for just 20 bucks. So look, furniture, $130 profit. They're always my highest profit items that I sell and I sell them on Facebook Marketplace with zero fees. So 130 bucks, it's really helped my week. Another single item of furniture. I wanna try and hopefully get a few more next week. So they were my nine best sold sales items of the week, guys. Hopefully you got some value out of those. Let me know in the comments below, what have you sold this week for a really good profit? And what did you buy it for? Where did you buy it? I'd really love to hear it. I always love to read those stories in the comments. We're gonna dive into our featured reseller of the week.
We've got Daniel this week and Daniel goes by staying in your own lane on Instagram and on YouTube and he's slowly starting to put a few more videos onto his YouTube channel. So definitely go and check that one out. He's already got a heap of garage sales videos in there, uh, but give him a sub and check him out on Instagram as well. Um, look, he's a great reseller doing some awesome things. He wants to get into it full time. And I'll tell you what, with the sale that he's got here, as I touched on at the beginning of this episode, I think full-time could be a real thing for you, mate, because he's gone out to the op shops. He's clearly built the relationships with the guys in this particular op shop because he's been able to go out the back and he's gone out the back and he's been able to source DVDs, CDs, video games, the works. He's been able to rummage through it all. Now, he has found one DVD season worth of episodes. It was Project Runway. And he's been able to find all eight seasons, one to eight. But I was blown away with the price that he's been able to get for it. He sold it to a US person. So somebody in the US has picked this one up. Um, $400 plus $100 worth of shipping. So basically a $500 sale for just eight seasons worth of a TV show. That has really motivated me to keep sourcing for DVDs. I couldn't believe that you can sell what I thought was a pretty standard TV show, Project Runway. I don't think there was anything rare or fancy about it. But $500, that is just madness. Well done, Daniel. That is just a huge result, mate. Can't uh, congratulate you more. I really do want to go out and start sourcing DVDs after that one. But um, go and give him a follow. He's our featured reseller of the week. Um, check him out on Instagram. Check him out on YouTube. He's always picking up really cool items and he's doing a pretty good job of it from a reselling perspective as well. So um, you're our featured reseller, mate. Well done. All right, guys, let's dive into my weekly sales numbers to let you know how I'm going. If we pull the map up here, we're looking at March 15 and March 21. Items sold at 57 this week, which is a personal best. I've never done 57 in the space of just one week. Cost of goods, $342. That has been turned into $1,533 this week with a profit of $1,191. So pretty good profit margin there, 78%, a lot of thrifted goods. What I will say is that total sales number doesn't include the postage costs that come along with it. And there is all also 15% of fees to be taken out of that figure as well. So look guys, if I'm doing 1500 in sales every single week, I'm having a pretty good run and that is getting me towards my goals that I've got for an annual basis. So look, I'm really happy with this. The key learnings that I've had from this week is that the small sales do accumulate. Never be disappointed with a sale of any kind because it just tells you that the algorithm is ticking over in your favor. You are getting positioned for people to buy your product and that is a very good thing. So for me to sell 57 uh, products to make $1,500 worth of sales, my average sale price there is around $27 plus postage. So look, it's a relatively low number, but I'm getting the volume of 57 sales. So I'm not too disappointed. Um, the other one as well, I am doing the end relist strategy. So I am looking at the beginning of the day at how many items I've got actually ending on that day. And I'm physically ending it myself and relisting it myself. And that creates a new code. It brings a fresh listing to the item. And that is actually getting me a number of sales each and every day. So to be able to average around eight sales a day this week, I think it's because I've recently adopted that strategy that's really helping me get towards that number. So I'm also obviously going ahead and putting new listings in on that day as well. So my total number of listings is quite high on a daily basis still, but it's been that end relist strategy that has really helped me. So let me know in the comments, are you doing that strategy yourself? And if you're not, definitely give it a go because it's certainly been working for me at the minute. And the power of building up your store is the other one that I wanted to quickly mention. So over the last six months, I've put a lot of time to build up 900 items in my eBay store. And I'm probably now starting to see the benefit of having those 900 items. If I don't list a certain number of items, for example, on a specific day, say for instance, I wanted to take a day off, then I can do the end relist strategy. And I've got the benefit of having a rollover of 20 or 30 items for that day. So I'm still getting a refresh of 20 to 30 items. It's still bringing me in new sales and I can take a day off. So there's a real efficiency aspect to that from that side of things. But that wouldn't be the case if I hadn't put in the time to build up my store to 900 listings. Listings. So I really do think if you're just starting out in your reselling journey to actually put a lot of time into just building up your store to as many items as you possibly can. And then from there, you can almost sort of, um, you know, put it on pilot mode and just kind of maintain what you've got in your store, see 
bit, whittle down a little bit, and then put a bit more time into building it back up to that figure. So I've started to do that recently, but it's only been because of the fact that I've had a big six months in um, to start off this journey. So um, that are probably a couple of my key takeaways. Hopefully you got some value out of that and, and everything else in today's episode, a really good featured resell of the week this week. And then some pretty good, while it was sort of low profit items, no big Hail Mary items this week from a sales perspective, small accumulation of sales wins. So don't worry about your average cost of goods. As long as you're bringing in volume, you're still getting a really good result. So thanks very much for tuning into this one, guys. That'll do me for today. Look forward to catching you in the next episode on Tuesday. I will be back for another one. Thanks very much for tuning into this one. We'll see you soon.